Uh, Asif. Ah, okay. I got it.
Yeah. You know this recording to my place, does it matter? You know where it's recording? Does it always record it? Does it record it the right place? It should be recording, yeah. That's the cloud, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, Bokatov. Good morning, everyone. Shavuatov. Thank you. Chodesh Tov. Thank you for bearing with us as we first got through the Mitzukat Chanaya of Rechavia and then the technical difficulties, but we're up and ready to go. So we are continuing now with the volume 18, Tumam Rabbanan. Last week we began the topic of Shehiya and uh as I said, we need to bear with it for a little bit. We didn't get into many of the practicalities yet, but we're building up the foundations, understanding the principles of Shia, and then we'll get to today some of the some of the practical applications. Again, not to be confused, Chazara, which we will talk, that's probably the more relevant and more practical question, which comes up every week, that we'll talk about hopefully next week. A Chazara, in terms of what you need to do, what are the conditions to put food back onto the hot plate or back on the fire on Shabbat, or on Shabbat morning, if I might cook food and I want to put, want to heat it up, right? That We're not talking about that yet. That is Chazara, that's the next stage. Right now we're dealing with Shehiya, which is leaving food cooked, uncooked, whatever it is, leaving food in order for it to get heated, 
I leave it on the flame, whatever type of flame that may be, before Shabbat. The question is, can we do that? So we said mid or writer, there is no issue with that whatsoever. On Shabbat, I'm not performing any action of cooking. Of course, one would need to be careful if the food is not fully cooked before Shabbat, not to do anything that is going to hasten the cooking on Shabbat, or so moving it to a outer part of the flame, covering up with the lid, stirring, anything like that, that would be forbidden. But assuming all I've done is left the pot on the fire before Shabbat, mid or writer, I've done nothing. Come Rabbanan and say, wait a minute, not so fast. We're worried that if, right, we saw, yes, we saw last week, we saw how seriously we take our food, seriously we take our hot food, right? So therefore, we're worried you have your food which is left on the fire before Shabbat. You may come to stoke the coals unknowingly, unwittingly, without thinking. You come home from shul, you see the food is there, the food is not yet cooked. Let's uh, stoke the coals, raise the level of the fire. In modern, uh, in the modern day application for that would be turning up the heat of the fire, perhaps turning up the seats, the settings on the oven, etc. And therefore, in order to prevent that, Chazal said, Shehiya is forbidden. What is Shehiya? So we saw a major, major machloket between Hananiah and Chachamim, and this goes through as machloket in the Yishonim, machloket in the Yachronim. When, when are we concerned that a person is going to stoke the coals, that a person is going to raise the heat and inadvertently come to perform the melacha of, uh, of fire and cooking, etc. So according to Hananiah, Hananiah said, anytime the food is edible, and I'm no longer concerned, right? It's reached a minimal level of cooking before Shabbat. I can leave that on the fire. That's no problem. Chachamim said, no, 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 no. The food is edible. That's not enough. The food has to be perfect, right? So it has to be fully cooked. It has to be the extent, the type of food that anything, even continued cooking would be detrimental. Only then am I allowed to leave the food on, on the fire. That was the machloket between Hananiah and Chachamim. We saw Rishonim. Paskin differently, we saw Achronim Paskin differently. Bottom line is, we said, Le Katrila, we try to be Machmir, but Briev, in extenuating circumstances, we have what to rely on, so long as the food has reached the level of Machal Ben Rosai, which in a few moments we will define, as so long as it's reached that level, I can leave it on the fire before, before Shabbat. All of this relates to what we call a, a uh, fire, which is a Nagrufa Venaktuma, which is an uncovered fire, right? So the Parameter number one is what stage of cooking the food has reached. However, if the fire is what is called in the Mishnah, right, Garufa Katun, then even if the food is completely raw, I can leave it on according to everybody. Okay? And again, Garufa Katun is going to be significant when it comes to Chazara, which is that. But right now we're talking about Sheya. So long as the fire is covered, I can leave it on the, I can leave it on the hot plate or on the, on the fire before Shabbat. What does that mean, Garufa Katun? So in the days of the Mishnah, it meant one of two things. Either I've swept away the coals, so there are no coals left, so I can't I, I can't uh, sweep them away. Well, I can't stoke them because they're not there. Or Katum, if I've covered it up, I've covered it up with the dirt, with dust, whatever it is, so that it's really just glowing embers, but it's not. Uh, th th there's nothing to stoke anymore. So how is that going to translate into our modern appliances as well? It's very important, and we'll see a number of different uh, she taught a number of different opinions how we reach this. Uh, level of uh, uh, Garuf Vakatum. As I said, if your food is fully cooked, so for in terms of Shehiya, even if it was an open flame, there's what to, there is what to rely on. When it comes to Chazara, we're going to see one of the conditions is going to be that it has to be Garuf Vakatum. If it's not Garuf Vakatum, even if you could put it on beforehand, you can't put it back. Okay, so that's what we saw. That's what we saw last week. We also mentioned this idea of Kedera Chaita, where you have a raw food which is left on, which Chazal said in the Gemara, a completely raw food before Shabbat, that is okay to leave on the fire. We saw that nowadays it's not so practical because uh, the, 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 the reason, the logic behind that leniency is that it's not going to cook. It's, it's going to take a very, very long time to cook and it will never be ready for the evening meal. Nowadays with our ovens and heating things, that, that, that is probably never the case. Um, with the exception of perhaps a slow cooker, a crock pot, right, we mentioned that. Okay, let's have a look at page 134. So let's continue. One more uh, definition, and then we'll get into the practicalities of it. So we mentioned Machal ben Drusai, right? That was the baseline, even for, uh, well, for Hananiah, that was the baseline. He said, so long as the food is Machal ben Drusai, that's when you can leave it on the fire before Shabbat. So says Rashi, Rashi in Mesechon Shabbat, source number 21, ben Drusai listimaya, ben Drusai was a thief. And he would cook his food a third of the way. Why is the fact that he was a thief relevant? Because he was always running away. So he had to cook it minimally, and that's what he could eat. So Rashi says that Machal ben Rosai is considered half cooked. You'll see underneath the Rambam in source number 22, he says, He understands that. It is, so, so, so Rashi says it's a third cooked, and the Rambam says that it is half cooked. 
Okay, so the Shulchan Aruch HaRav, source number 23, he says the following, the Shur Ma'achal Ben Rosai, Yesh Omim Shur Kumo Shlish Bishol HaRoi Lo Kol Adam, Yesh Omim Shur Kumo Chatsi Bishol, there are others who say it's considered third cook, there's a half cook, Ulenyan Alacha, when it comes to halacha, generally speaking, again, everything we're dealing with now is a is a uh, is a rabbinic prohibition. If we're talking about cooking, we're talking about bishul. We discussed this regarding bishul doraita, going from machal ben rosai to fully cooked, etc. There would be doraita. But here we're talking about the rabbanan, and therefore he says, generally speaking, the principle is you have a safek to rabbanan. We say lekula, we rule leniently, right? So when it comes to Shabbat, we are more stringent. So therefore, the ideal is that we should have a few days in a day. Right now, the question, again, depends on what, same as we saw the Machloket by Yad Soledet Paul. The question, if we ask, which is the Machmer opinion when it comes to half cooked or third cooked, depends for what. Yeah, we're talking about, yeah, we're talking about uh, Shehiya, meaning we want the food to be cooked. So to be Machmer means it has to be more cooked, meaning we have to go to, to, to half cooked. So he says, ideally, you should, well, the food should be at least half cooked, if you're going to leave it out. Mi bodyom, im ein sham echal midake ater, i.e. it's not cover or whatever. Says, we can rely on the shita for even a third, a third cook. That is the Shulchan Aruch Haraf. The Mishnah Barah, source number 24, it says, Yes, Shomrim Chatzi Bishul, right? Shulchan Aruch Lekaman, Satam Chatzi Bishul, Mukom Adchak, if Shard, Yesh Lakel. So, same thing, Lekatchila, we should be stringent. Uh, extenuating circumstances, you can, re- you have what to, what to rely on. Now, the question is, when I say half cooked or third cooked, etc., how do we define how cooked it is? When, you know, at what stage do we say that? Is this a time issue? So, have a look at the Biscay Chuvot, source number 25. He says, <speaking in Hebrew> So, first opinion is, we took, based on the time it takes to cook. So, let's say I have a, I have a certain dish, and I know it takes uh, three hours to cook, right? From, from the time I put it on. So after one hour, let's say that's a third cooked. One and a half hours is, is a half cooked, right? That's one way of looking at it. Uh, he, he gives the example of two hours. I give the example of three hours because it's easier to work it out. But anyway. However, he says, when do I start counting? I'm starting, you have to preheat the oven. I start counting from the time that it gets hot, because before it gets hot, it's not, it's not cooking yet. Okay, so that is one, that is one way of, of looking at it. And then he says, there are those who count differently. Because uh, often, right, with the, the cooking has done at the end, is going to is going to uh, have more tangible effect than the cooking at the beginning. You know, it's like I remember when uh, used to get sometimes those computer games you used to used to install, right? And they used to what they, what they always do they show you the bar of the progress of how far you know how far it's uh, how much it's installed. You know, five percent, ten percent. So it always used to be very very quickly it gets to ninety five percent. You know, within a few minutes, then an hour later it's still you're still at ninety five percent. So it does the, it's not 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 all parts of the uh, of the installation in that case of the cooking are equal. So he says, he says, yeah, maybe we don't go by time, but we look at the quality of the food. Is the food actually half cooked? Right? How 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 uh, cooked is it? How raw is it? Okay, so that's much more that's much more difficult probably to assess. Um, but we'd say if it's at the stage where you could, you know, you could eat it. I don't think you have to taste it. But if you could uh, possibly would be edible, then that would be. Uh, so that would be that's the second way of measuring. Ochot Shabbat number twenty six. He quotes the Chazonish, right? He says she shiul zeh shem machzit abishul. He have shalom shalom elav shuls man abishul. So the only way that we can measure it is based on the time, and therefore we go by the time from that it's yad soledet until we know that it's uh, that it's uh, that it's cooked. Over the page, he does say tzatzar chiyon. Nonetheless, notwithstanding, it's not so clear. Right, because maybe it's the later cooking that does more. Okay, so so uh, he says at the bottom line, he says yes, and hogbaz el chumra. Bottom line is, if we want to know if the food is machal ben drosai, we assume so long as it is somewhat edible, then we would consider it to be to, to to be at that stage. Okay, so now that we've seen more or less the fundamentals, the background in terms of shia, what is required? Again, 
We spent a long time on the machloket of Hananya and Chachamim, and this is the Gemara spends a long time for it. As I say, that is only relevant if I have a fire which is open, which is open flame that is not Garufa Katum. The easiest way of getting around the prohibition of Shehiya is making sure that the fire is Garufa Katum. So how do we, but what does that mean, right? In the uh, Tanur, in the oven, or the Kira, as it's called, right? There are different types of ovens in the days of the Mishnah. There, as we mentioned, you have to stoke the coals. There, there is only really one source of the source of the fire, which is the source of the heat. It's also the place which you would adjust if you want to make it hot. Right. Nowadays, we have a little bit of a different situation. Okay? And potentially, again, what are we talking about? Which appliances? So we could be talking about the stove. We could be talking about the oven. We've got the electric hot plate. We've got maybe the crock pot. Those are, I'm not sure there's not, uh, right now, I can't think of, of, of anything else that we would use. Um but you take the stove, for example, so you have the burner, you have the fire, which is in one place, and that's where the heat source is obviously coming from. But if I want to adjust the fire, if I'm, what's the equivalent of stoking the coals? I'm not going to actually right, touch the fire. I'm going to adjust the, the switches, right, the knobs on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the stove. So therefore, it's two. So if I say now that what, what is the equivalent of Garufa Katum? Is it do I have to do something with the fire? Do I have to cover the fire? Or do I have to cover up the buttons, the switches where I can so that I can't adjust it? Maybe I have to cover up both. What essentially what we're asking is what's behind this yeah. idea of Garufa Katum? Chazal said you have to change it, you have to make it in such a way so that you won't come to so that you won't come to adjust. Does it mean that we're, we're changing the quality of the cooking? I we're covering it up, or we're changing the heat so that nothing will help? Or are we just putting some sort of a hair care, something, something just to remind us, right? and that's going to that's going to make the difference as to what we have to do with our uh, 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 with our appliances. So let's see, page one three seven, page one three seven. So we start off talking about stoves, gas stoves. This probably applies to electric as well. Number, uh, although although they're uh, practically speaking, it's a little bit more difficult. But let's see, source number twenty seven. So the Shulchan Aruch. So he says here. Yeah, the following, the Shulchan Aruch is obviously not talking about a gas stove, but there is a principle which comes out, which will be very relevant. It says, Okay, so you uh, you left your food on from before Shabbat. I had a friend once who, uh, I remember, the, they told us the first Shabbat they were married, so they didn't know any of the halachot of Sheyah, of Chazara. They were worried of making a mistake, so they left all the food from the entire Shabbat on the hot plate on Friday night. The house nearly burnt down. It was an interesting, uh, it was an interesting Shabbat. So... Uh, but but uh, you left your food here on the fire on on Friday night. You go to sleep. You wake up and you see the food is burning. Okay, this this could happen. So what do you do? You worried it's going to burn even more. So says the Shulchan Aruch. Because now if we start taking it off and we start putting it back on, and maybe it's cooked and maybe it's not cooked. Okay. Okay, so presumably what's being spoken about here is that you had your pot on the kira, right, directly on, on the fire. So he says you can take it off and you can take another pot, take an empty pot, place that on top, and then place your pot with the food on top of on top of the empty pot. Um, okay, there is a discussion here whether that empty pot is one that you've already used, it's already been on the fire, it's a new pot. Okay, we won't get into that now. Um, but but that's what he says. He says you can put it right on, on, on top of another pot. So it's not directly on the fire, but it's a, but it's a, on top of another. So so if you have a look, you see the foot, well, footnote, the, the, the text at the top of page 138, right? It says, just as a stove must be grufa or ktuma to permit sheya, must also be grufa or ktuma to permit chazara, as we'll see in the next sheet. Right, again, what the case of the Shulchan Aruch, the reason we're bringing this, even though this is talking about chazara, and we want to extrapolate from here to sheya, but in terms of the definition of what is considered grufa or ktuma, what's considered a covered flame, that will be the same, that will be the same definition. So here, we see that the Shulchan Aruch permits returning the pot to the stove that's covered with another empty pot, which implies that this is the kind of covering. I, and therefore, what we see from here, this is the source. You've even got a picture here at the bottom of page 138 for the idea of a blech, right? That you have to cover the fire, covering the fire itself. The truth is that with the blech, and you can see it very nicely in the picture, that it's that it has the very often times, it's not just a flat metal sheet, but it's got the comes in front as well, and that's going to cover up all the knobs, so essentially you're doing both. But the main purpose of it is in order to cover up the fire, 
And that we assume would, would uh, function as a visual reminder. Let's see what Rav Moshe Feinstein says, source number 28. It says, right. The point is that when you cook on a gas flame, a gas flame you used to cook, right? we'll see later on when we get to hot plates, there are those that are going to be very, very lenient, even in terms of returning food onto a hot plate, because nobody cooks on a hot plate. A hot plate is what's it called, and its very name is a, is a Shabbat platter, right? So, so everybody knows that's not the way you cook. The same thing, yeah, it's one on, on a gas flame. You, when you want to cook, you cook on the flame. Who puts a piece of metal on top of the flame in order to cook? Only some, you know, Mr. Gas wants to, uh, yeah, these Jews who want to uh, keep their food hot for Shabbat. But that's not the way you cook. So he says, because nobody is going to cook like this. Because generally speaking, you want to lower the heat, you want to raise the heat, you just press, use the knobs. So therefore, this is a great hacker. This is a visual cue that, uh, and, and therefore, once you see it, right, if the concern was you're going to come to stoke the coals, or in our case, you're going to come to raise the flame, as soon as you come to the food, say, oh, well, well, what's this, uh, what's this black doing here? Okay, I remember it's Shabbat. And therefore, then uh, we never cover them up because of cooking. We only cover them up because of Shabbos. And therefore, the next paragraph, now in bold, he says, right? So it says Rav Moshe that even according to this, it's just enough. It's enough just to cover the flame. I don't have to cover the buttons as well. There's many people have the custom, therefore, just have a black, just to cover up the, the fire, and that's good enough. Again, everything we're talking about now today is about shahiya, it's about in order to permit you to leave the food on before Shabbat. You want to put food on on Shabbat? That's next week's shim. Okay? But he says, now, on the next page, he says, He says, Right, as we've seen in the picture, he says it's better. He says it's a chumrah, but it's better that you should cover up the buttons as well. In other words, the heker, what's recognizable, is also on the flame, also on the heat source, and also well, I would adjust the heat source. Okay, uh, let's just read the last paragraph. So bottom line says Rav Moshe Feinstein, I have to cover the flame. I should cover the buttons as well. But if I just cover the flame, that is that is enough. And there's a humor, the covering up the buttons as well is a humor. We're going to see four different shitot over here. But Ben Zion Abashol, source number two. And again, and I think this is probably, nowadays most people just use hot plates. But if you are using it, some people still use the blech and the, and the gas stove, etc. So it's probably Min Haga is like Rav Moshe Feinstein. Okay, which is which is uh, cover up the, the the flame. And good to cover the buttons if you can, but it's not it's not Merkin. Um, they, they don't have to put anything on it. Before Shabbat, from before Shabbat, I can leave anything on. But yeah, and this is very important because it's like you know the hot plates generally, usually the heat is more or less uniform across the, across the whole thing. With the blech, it's very very clear because especially if I don't have all the burners on, and it's probably advisable not to leave all the burners on. And one might be on a little bit higher, a little bit lower. So then, if I've left, this is exactly what we keep saying. If I've left raw food or not fully cooked food on before Shabbat, I have a blech, so I can. But on Shabbat, I, I can't move that pot. Right? If I want to take the food out, I have to take it off the black, and then I can take the pot, and I, putting it back is going to be problematic. That we'll see. That's going to be next week's show. Okay. I think it'll be next week's show. Mm -hmm. um, so it uh, depends how far we get. All right. So, so that's 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 Rav Moshe Vaitin. Rav Ben-Sion he uh, is a little bit more lenient. He says, not even is it a chumrah. He says, there's no need to cover the, the, the knobs at all. He says, yeah, we'll just read the tshuva. He says, ten mich pach. Don't need to do anything. Right? Some people cover the buttons, some people remove the buttons. Okay. He says that that is not required. He says, but you have to cover up, you have to cover up the fire. Um now the Chazon Ish was not so supportive of this whole idea of a blech. Okay, because he says, you can have a look underneath. He says the Chazon Ish takes an opposing view. He holds that covering a gas stove is not sufficient to make it gufa uktuma. 
In his view, the Shulchan Aruch is not lenient because placing the empty pot is like covering the ashes, but rather because it's like when it's putting food near the fire and not directly upon it. In other words, somewhere where it's not going to reach the same level of heat. Have a look at the Chazonish, source number 13. He says, Okay. Uh, that's the even if you put a blech, right? This does not, this this is not equivalent to the case of the Shulchan Aruch, where you have an empty pot in between. Does this achshiv agaba? You so you put something you cut you cover on top. It doesn't really make a. His stringency is based on the fact that it doesn't significantly lower the lower the heat, and uh, he thinks you're still putting it on top uh, on the on the fire. It's still considered the same. But as we said, the minaga olam here is not like the chazonish. There seems to be a a, a chumra. Yalkut Yosef, he rejects it. Um, that is in source number thirty-one. Now there is an opposite. It's an opposite view. Again, Rav Moshe Feinstein said you have to cover the fire. And you should cover the knobs. So there are some who say that just covering the knobs itself is enough. Forget about the fire. Again, if our whole concern, you can understand the logic. If our whole concern is that you're going to adjust it, so if I make some sort of echo or something recognizable, some sort of change by the place where you would adjust it, that will stop you from uh, from doing that. Menuchat Ava, source number 32. Um, so, so you could just cover up the flame or he says you could cover up the batters and not cover up the flame you should uh, you should uh, you, you should cover that as well but here I have a look at source number 33 this is in Rav Shimon Aida quoting Rav Aaron Kotler he says Shamati b'shem Rav Aaron Kotler David Tanurim Didan after Tov Shagam Ha'esh Yem Choseh Beblech Okay, it says yeah, tanurim. I think it means it really means stoves. But he says even though, uh, right, it's good to have the blech. The main part is not covering the fire, but covering the batons. Okay, so this would be a, a, a very important uh, leniency to know if I have a, an electric stove, for example, which cannot be covered. So here, according to according to Ramaran Katla, if you just cover up the buttons, that would be enough. As I said, most poskim do not seem to accept that, but there is, a, but that is a, that is his opinion. And then the most machmer opinion, brought now in number thirty-four in the Ber Moshe, says that you need mikaradin. You would need to do both. Right? Have a look. Is vaday vaday. If you just leave it the ordinary way that you would cook on during the week, that's forbidden. And then he says, And he says, Of course, certainly everything. Whenever you have a chuba that says, you know, it's obvious. Generally speaking, that's when it's not obvious. And that's why I have to tell you. So, so of course, of course, you have to cover this. Of course, you have to cover that. Not everybody agrees. But he says, Okay, so the bottom line is, summary, we saw four different approaches. The question is, we want to get... Um, now again, if your food is fully cooked, right, or if we hold like the opinion, or if, if we rely on the opinion of Hanania, or it's Machal ben Rusai, even if you haven't done all of this, so then you could, you could still leave it. But again, the reason we barely ever are going to rely on a uh, fire which is uncovered is because... 99% of the time, we want to put food on uh, on Shabbat morning as well. So, so, but but essentially, our question is: when it comes to gruf grufal tuma, which is the language the Gemara uses for covering up the flame or sweeping away the coals, how does that translate into a gas stove? Possibility number one is that means we cover up the fire, right? Possibility number two means that we cover up the knobs. Possibility number three is that we do both. Okay, and we've seen poskim like this, poskim like that. Bottom line is most uh, uh, Minaga Olam is like with Moshe Feinstein to say that the fire itself has to be covered and it's good to cover the to cover the knobs as well, but that is not not the Ikra. Okay, that is in terms of a stove. What about in terms of an oven? Now again, 
A question of uh, right now is shahiyah, which is leaving food in the oven. With the oven, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. I'm not talking about returning food into an oven, into an oven on Shabbat. That is that is far more complicated, and that we can discuss uh, in future. Right. Right now, our question is just shayya. So you want to leave the oven, the food in the oven. When Shabbat comes in, you want to leave the oven on, and then you want to take the food. Uh, you want to take the food out. So again, there's going to be an additional complication in terms of opening the oven and opening the oven door. And what if there's lights? And what if it's affecting the thermostat? And that is another question. But in terms of the question of uh, of uh, shahiyah itself, so let's maybe read the introduction also here in the Tzumah Rabbanan, page one four one at the bottom. It says here, obviously, electric ovens are also subject to the same halachic restrictions, which apply to other methods of cooking, including shahiyah, over the page. However, using electric ovens involves additional complications because of lights and thermostats and safety features. I think it was last week we spoke about dishwashers, right, during the week. So all these uh, safety features, would, you know, sometimes you come and you want to uh, allow things on Shabbat. So let's just disable the safety features. That is also not, uh, not, not, not uh, recommended. The safety features are there for a reason. Right? These issues are typically more pronounced than most recent models of ovens. In the interest of appealing to Shabbat observant consumers, many factors are ovens which can be run in Shabbat mode. Okay? Even if you have Shabbat mode, you still have to know when you can use the Shabbat mode. Special functions that curtail major features that prevent use on Shabbat. These may include allowing the oven door to be opened without turning on a light, disabling touchpads, cycling temperature control, etc. Uh, in any case, the conscientious consumer should know these features vary from one product to another. These may impact how each oven might be used on Shabbat. This is very, very important, right? When you say Shabbat mode, I'll give you by, by way of an analogy. We were discussing somebody asked uh, last week something about a certain action and said it's Mahadran. What does that mean? I told them, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but Mahadran is a made up term. Right? The only place where Mahadran has a, has a meaning in the Gemara is Chodesh Kislev, coming up to Hanukkah. Hanukkah, we know there is a definition, a very, a very uh, specific definition. What is the mitzvah minadin? What is Mahadran? What is Mahadran mena Mahadran? Is a machlok at Rishonim, how we divide, which is which, etc. But that is a mahadran. Nowadays, you know, you go to a restaurant and they have a hechshin, it says mahadran. Okay, so it means something, but it's meant to mean that it's a higher standard. But what is involved in that standard? Is it related to which products they bring in? Is it related to who checks them, who washes them, how they wash them, how often the mashkiach is there? It varies, right? What Rabbanot Yerushalayim says calls Mahadran, and what Badat Spet Yosef calls Mahadran, and what Badat Sadat Haredi calls Mahadran, what Rabbanot Tel Aviv calls Mahadran. It all could be all different things. They're all called Mahadran, even in Jerusalem. It's not a share about Kashrut, but I just have to mention, you know, you walk into restaurants in Jerusalem and you can find uh, they have a Tuda, a Heksha from the Rabbanot Rashid. So is the, there is Rabbanot Yerushalayim, and then there is Rabbanot Yerushalayim Mehuderet, which is also made up to him. And then there's Rabbanut Yerushalayim Mahadran. And then there's Rabbanut Yerushalayim Mahadran Badat. Not Badat, the Rabbanut. The Rabbanut has a level called Badat. I, I don't know what the difference is between all of them. Um, and now you're thinking, well, if the Rabbah doesn't know how I'm meant to know, okay? Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. But in any event, my point is, the same word Mahadran means different things in different cases. So too, yeah, when it says Shabbat mode, so I have to know what company, what oven, what model, Shabbat mode may mean very, very different things. So it's important to uh, to, 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 to know what, what that is. So uh, we continue. In the case of an oven running with a thermostat set to operate at a given temperature and not to respond to the opening and closing, some post-game rule the food may be left in an area of Shabbat because it's though it is Okay, this is exactly what we're going to ask. Again, so this is very important. The thermostat, the idea is, and this with a lot of mechanical and electric devices, etc. Um, you have this with hot water urns and all sorts of things. The question is always, sometimes, if it's running at a specific temperature, or it's uh, maybe it's not heating all the time, but it's, but it's after a certain interval of time, every 30 minutes or every hour, whatever it is, that's when it's going to heat up. So then there would be no problem. The fact that I'm pouring out water, opening the door or closing the door is not going to make any difference. That is, that's, uh, that would be allowed. If by my opening the door, it's going to change the temperature and then it's going to cause it to, to operate in a different way. That's where we're going to have problems. So it's, they say, yeah, we're dealing with Shabbat mode, right? The thermostat, that's not our issue. Our issue we want to know is the, is the oven itself considered grufa uktuma? So some say yes. Um, Right, and some say in the next paragraph, much like the debate surrounding a burner, many poskim rules insufficient to cover or disable the dials or buttons because Gruvak to Mark can describe only the state of the heat source itself. Again, this is exactly the question we saw before: do we look at the heat source or do we look at the at the at the settings? 
So uh, that's would be problematic to leave raw food cooking inside an oven as heating coils often remain exposed. Even if the heating elements are found only underneath the oven surface and are covered, leaving raw food may still be problematic since this is the normal manner in which the oven is used, right? That's what we what we saw before. And that was the Chazon Ish. Essentially, that when I say I have to cover it up, does it mean that I'm that I'm covering covering the, the heat source, covering the fire? Or if the fire is normally covered and that's the normal way of cooking, do I have to do something different? So let's see the the Shemat Shabbat Kil Chata. So he says, source number 35, says, that's our starter because again we're not dealing now with the questions of lights and 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 uh, uh, thermostats etc. You can leave what he says only fully cooked food from from before Shabbat. In other words, this is not so, not so clear that this is. Uh, uh, satisfies all the conditions we need for Grufa By the way, I'll just say, if you leave your food, you, you know, you need many people will leave the food in the oven before Shabbat, and then just before Shabbat comes on, you turn on, you turn the oven off, okay, so you leave it in there to stay warm, that's not considered leaving in the oven, that's that's just like a box, right, and then that, that, that in itself would not be, we can ask what about Hatmana, is that a question of Hatmana? But I may say it would not be, it would not be an issue, but we'll talk about that in a later share as well. Um, Right, Yalkut Yosef, that is number 36. Again, it's Rav, uh, Rav Yitzhak Yosef on the uh, Psakim of his father. He says um, the following. He says that, that the oven could be considered Grufa um, Right, but nonetheless, he says you should have, uh, you should put something on to be uh, uh, some sort of a hacker. Let's, let's read. Number 36. יש בתוכו גוף חימום הפועל בדרגת חום קבועה, נקרא מצב שבת, שלא באמצעות המסטט. Okay, so he says, יש מקילים להשעות בתוכו מערב שבת תבשיר שנתפשו כל צורכו. There are those who would rely on this, who consider this גרופה כתומה, right? אפילו הוא מצטמק ויפה לו, ואין חוששים שמה יגביע את חומתנו בשבת. We're not concern, concerned you're going to raise the heat, which is the equivalent of stoking calls, right? As we said, the חשיב ככירה גרופה כתומה. וכל שכן שמותר להניח בתוכו מערב שבת, מים חמים שהיה צולל פה, אחר שהגיעו לרתיחה. Again, a lot of these discussions, you know, nowadays it's much easier. You have your hot plate, you have your urn, you have all the uh, appliances which do it for you. Um, so this would not be uh, so relevant. Um, he writes in the next paragraph, יש מחמירים בתפשיר שמסתמק ביפה לחסות הכפתורים. He says, there are those who are מחמיר to cover up the buttons, או לרשום בפתק שבת, what you're built up, not to write שבת. Uh, you know, put on a piece of masking tape or whatever it is and stick that on top. Um, and in that case, he says, you could um, you could even put a tafshir, which is Mr. Mikvia Felo. The last two lines says, Okay, so again, our question is, is the, the oven itself, is it, we assume that the eating element is, is that considered the eating element is covered? We're not going to adjust it. Point the Shemar Shabbat Kilchata. Not so clear. According to Akut Yosef, yes, we can. Uh, yes, we can rely on it. Now there are others, other poskim who are who are more like the Shmat Shabbat, who are more stringent, who say at the end of the day the heating element is exposed. You can't say that it's a uh, a covered flame, and therefore, if you want to use the uh, if you want to use the oven for sheya, you're going to need to you're going to need to cover up. With the foil or metal sheet or something. Shut or let's see or Ben Sion Abba Shoi. He says that in source number 37. Um, right, he says, Tanoch Kira Shei Nagulfa. Motal Ashot Bot Tafshim Ev Shabbat, Mechazeb Bapach, or Binyar Kesef, Et Makorachon. Again, all this discussion is where I'm leaving the oven on and I'm leaving the heat setting on when Shabbat comes in. If I turn the oven off before Shabbat, you know, I had I added uh, my food in the oven for an hour, whatever, I've left it and I'm going to use the heat that's retained even while the oven is off. So, that's no question. That's not sheyak. So I'm not leaving it on the flame. As soon as I keep the flame on the Yochot Shabbat as well, he says, right? So like the machloka we saw about the gas, right? About the stove. There were those who said you have to cover the fire. Those who say you have to cover the buttons. But the point is, it says you have to cover it up. You have to do something. Otherwise, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, use the oven. Now, uh, the other problem 
the, and we mentioned this before, is with the open is, is with opening the door. Right? Have a, again, so page one four four at the bottom. It says important to emphasize, even according to most of those poskim who do permit shehia of an uncooked food in an oven in the various ways described, any action that hastens the cooking constitutes the melachav bishul. Therefore, closing the oven door is also considered cooking. Therefore, a person must be careful not to open the door before the cooking is completed. If I am not sure, right? Assuming even it's Shabbat mode and the light's not going to come on and all of that, which which itself is not so simple. But I'm not sure if the food is ready yet. So I'm opening the oven door. I have a look at my chicken. I say, ah, it's not ready yet. I'm going to close the door again. By closing the door, I am hastening the cooking. So therefore that would be that would be uh, forbidden as well. Um Okay, so let's see. Um, let's see number four, over the page. So just number forty. This is the Shmat Shabbat. He says, "Olam tanuch hashmali amufal ledeves et chom." Mutar lech tamesh bolot tei potav shenim milifnei Shabbat. Mutar lech tor tel tatanu. He says, "If you leave food in the oven for Shabbat, you can open the door." Ach velrak bezman shiadu hashaves et kvar afil tatanu. Viadu hashagam ein shum peilot hashmali tim b'tichata shel adelat. I can only open the door if I know it's not going to activate the thermostat or do anything else. When it comes to closing the door, if the food inside is not fully cooked, or closing the door is going to cause the thermostat to reactivate or anything else like that, well, then I can't close the door. I'm going to have to have my oven door open the whole of Shabbat, and that's going to be a bit of a problem. Um, number 41, this is from the Star K, right, maybe to summarize. They say, yeah, uh, may I open my oven to get food on Shabbat? So he says, first one has to be sure you're not going to cause a light or an electrical switch or something to go on or off. In the case of convection ovens, opening the door may cause the circulating fan to go off. Even though these actions are not intended, they are prohibited, as if there was intent, since this is an automatic consequence. Okay, in, the, in terms of this, the uh, we didn't read it inside. The, the, the uh, Yokut Yosef was a little bit more lenient. For for Svarden, there's a little bit more room to be lenient on some of these issues, but uh, nonetheless, he says it's forbidden. If opening the oven door does not automatically set off an electrical reaction, um, etc. And then he says, at the end, it should be noted that the commercial appliance industry is subject to ever-changing technological advancements and changes in popular design, as well as endless variations from one model to the next. That's what we said at the beginning. That's necessary to know how specific oven functions before attempting to apply a halachic ruling, especially from an outdated source. Yeah, this is, uh, again, with the rate that technology is changing, this is a problem that we have many, many times. You know, somebody says, you found a sh uh, should somewhere that said this is mutar. It's a completely different uh, reality. It's a completely different uh, different oven. It doesn't work that way. Okay, so bottom line, ovens, as you can see, are very, very complicated. If you look at page 148 and 149, we won't read it together, but there's a whole table, the different opinions in terms of the oven, etc. Again, we're not, we haven't even discussed, we haven't scratched the surface in terms of if there is a way of taking food out and putting food back in the oven on Shabbat, okay, that we're not uh, that we're not dealing with. Our question is, Shahiya, question is, is there a way to leave my oven on and the oven is going to stay on and I have the food inside and then on Friday night I'm going to take the food and take the food out? Is that considered Shahiya or not? So as we've seen, there are numerous opinions and the, 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 the starting point is the oven has to have a Shabbos mode so that I know that when I'm opening the door or closing the door, I'm not activating the thermostat, I'm not activating any lights, I'm not doing anything like that. Okay, that is the, that's our baseline. Without that, nothing to talk about. Once that has been solved, so then we said like this, we said as well, if the food is not fully cooked, I cannot close the oven with the food, with the food inside. Okay, the question is, am I allowed to leave the food there in the first place or is the oven considered garof kato? So we said the Shemrat Shabbat Kilchata says that the oven is not considered Garol Fulkatum, and therefore it's only if the food is fully cooked. There are poskim who are a little bit more lenient, and there are those who say that you would have to do the same as the hot plate. You would have to cover up maybe the heating element or cover up the buttons. Okay, so there are different uh, different opinions there. Uh, again, everybody should, uh, should follow what it, whatever their, their practice is, but uh, there are a number of, number of different opinions, and let's just say it's complicated. Okay, that's how we will, say, that's how we will summarize the ovens. Now, electric hot plates, okay, there's lots to talk about about the Shabbat Plata, and we'll talk more about this when it comes to Chazara. When it comes to Shehiya, it's pretty straightforward. I have a Shabbat hot plate. I want to leave my food on the hot plate before Shabbat, even directly on the hot plate. There shouldn't, be, shouldn't really be any problem with that. Let's see source number 42. 
שמירת שבת כהלכתה, היא שזה עולם פלטה חשמלית המיוחדת לשבת. שולן פלטה, אוקיי? פרנטי זה שזה... לא, לא, הכל לשבת פלטה, אבל פרנטי זה קוראים שולן פלטה. In any event, זה אומר פלטה מיועדת לשמוע חום המאכל שעליה, ואין רגילים לבשל עליה, וגם אי אפשר להגדיל את מידת החום שלה. There are a number of advantages when it comes to the Shabbos hot plate. One is the fact that nobody cooks on a hot plate. Right, it's a Shabbos plate. You don't use it for cooking, you cook, use it for warming. Number one. Number two, and this is the proof of it, you can't adjust the heat. Okay, sometimes the problem because the food burns or whatever, and people complain that it's too hot, but there's a tremendous halachic advantage. The fact that I can't adjust the heat, there's no concern I'm going to adjust the heat because I can't adjust the heat. So therefore, Okay, it's the Shemrat Shabbat. Shabbat tells you, Bashufi, that you can be make out. Okay, then you, know, then you know you're okay. So he says you can leave your food directly on the hot plate. Now again, the reason why many people have the custom of not putting the food directly on, that's related to Chazara. And Chazara could be an issue on Friday night as well. Friday night, I take the soup off, I take the, whatever it is, I take it off in order to serve, and then I want to put it back on. Okay, that's already a different question to leaving it on before Shabbat. But before Shabbat, leaving it on directly on the platter, that is fine. He quotes here, the footnote of Shlomo Zaman Oibach. He says, Shemati Magam of Shlomo Zaman Oibach, Oibach nimoko imo, tebaze shem ma'amid me'elf Shabbat akdera a platter kazot, ha'reze chashiv kiktuma. V'gam lo shayach atam, shel shema yechater. None of the concern applies over here. K'man she'ena platter me'ed le'bishur. It's not used for cooking. G'am yefshar la'gdil et midat ha'chom shela. Okay, and therefore, um, that is okay. Yalkut Yosef says the same thing. You can leave the food on before. Now, there is a stringent view, right? There's always a stringent view. But that is uh, the Orchot Shabbat, because Yerav Eliashib said that you have to cover the hot plate with foil. Okay, it says here on number 44, it says, So even the Orchot Shabbat himself, he says that it's mutar. That's the opinion of Rav Shomaz Alman, it's the opinion of the Shemad Shabbat. This was Rav who said that one needs to, needs to uh, cover it with thick aluminium foil. Uh, right, and he explains, And he explains, He says, right, we have a, we have a, um, a principle, what's called lo plug. When Chachamim, when Chachamim made a gzera, they didn't distinguish between specific cases. So he says that there's a, the, the gzera is, I want to leave my food on before Shabbat, I need some sort of a hacker. Therefore, you need some sort of a hacker. Again, notice, even with the schumra, he doesn't say you have to put it on top of a pot, he says just aluminium foil, that's enough. But again, I think that the, uh, the minhag ha'olam is, uh, uh, is not to require this. Um, okay, and that is that is in terms of Shia. As I said, Chazara, uh, we will get to next week. That is a different uh, that is a different story. Okay, so that concludes. Just to uh, uh, that, yeah, that co- that concludes Shaya. Maybe just to summarize very 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 quickly, we saw we looked at three different appliances today. We saw the gas stoves, we saw the ovens, and we saw the hot plates. Okay, and how if a person wants to leave the food on the hot sauce from on the heat sauce from before Shabbat. And again, I'll mention the caveat, which we keep mentioning. If the food is not cooked, again, there are ways, as we've seen, that one can 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 allow it. However, one needs to be very, very careful not to do anything that's going to hasten the cooking on Shabbat. But we saw the electric hot plate is the easiest. You can leave the food before Shabbat directly on the hot plate. No questions asked. There, is some, there are those who are machmet, but generally speaking, that's okay. The ovens, we saw the most complicated, right? It's not, uh, it's not so clear that it can be done. You need it to be on Shabbat mode. There are those who require you to put an insert inside the oven. There are those who require you to cover the buttons as well. But that is the most uh, that is the most complicated. And again, the easiest way if I want to leave food in the oven to keep it hot is just to turn the oven off before Shabbat comes in. And uh, uh, the gas stoves, again, we saw the concept of the blech. We pass in like with Moshe Feinstein, who says that the main, the, the car of Rifau Ktima is by covering up the fire, by having the blech on top of the on top of the heat source. He says it's a good thing to do as well. It's a chumrah that has, that has a large basis to cover up the buttons as well, but he but he does not hold that as strictly required. Okay. That can, uh, that's it for today. Next week, Bezrat Hashem, we'll start talking about Hazara. What happens now on Shabbat? I've done everything before Shabbat, but on Shabbat Friday night or Shabbat morning, I want to put the food, I've taken the food off and I want to put it back on the hot plate. Okay, that's a whole other story. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that next week. Okay.